Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a physics 7a practice problem on the topic of microscopic bond energy. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that really helps our channel. Okay, so this is the problem that we're gonna be working with. So we have Sheldon Cooper continues to conduct experiments on his discovered elements, Sheldonium and Coopertonium. Uh, he identifies them when two um, SH or PE atoms interact, they are governed by the same pairwise potential. However, a Sheldon Coopertonium bond is stronger than either Sheldon Sheldon or Cooper Cooper bond. Based on the information above, label on the plot shown which potential corresponds to a SHPE pair and which to an SHSH or PEPE -E pair, briefly explain. All right, so um, let's just go ahead and do that and then we'll put the problem back up on the screen. So as you can see, I have everything uh, written down over here. So I have both of the graphs to the best of my ability, but do remember that I post the empty PDF. So if you want to look at the actual graph that was given on the quiz, by all means, go ahead and download that, use it as a reference. Okay, so these two have the same potential. However, if you have one of each, uh, you have a stronger potential. So based on this, that's a pretty easy thing to answer because uh, this one is, first of all, b both Sheldonium and Cupertunium must uh, have the exact same radius because they cross here at the same line, both of them. So that means that both of them have the same radius, which means that if you combine one of each, they have the same diameter as well. Um, however, this pink graph is uh, way stronger because it goes down farther down than the other one. So because this one goes farther down, that means that the pair has more potential energy. And that would mean that this one, the, the one that goes farther down, is a combination of Sheldonium and Cooper. And then this one is either or same, like this. All right, so now let's put the problem back on the screen. Um, Sheldon makes a structure from these elements as pictured below. The structure consists of two long chains of 100 atoms each. Note, only some atoms are pictured. Sheldon needs help from Physics 7A student to calculate the bond energy of this structure. You decide to consider only nearest neighbor contributions in your calculation and to neglect all edge effects. Calculate the contribution to the bond energy due to Sheldonium Sheldonium. Okay, so we have to do Sheldonium Sheldonium and Copertunium Copertunium first. Then for part C, we have to do the contribution for both of them. And then on part D, we basically have to add up both numbers to get a total number. Okay, so I have a little drawing um, over here of the situation. So the first thing that we have to do is, so for part two, we only start with um, the bonds are the same, Sheldon, Sheldon, Cooper, Cooper, and only use nearest neighbors. Okay, so for part two, they're asking us for um, Sheldon, Sheldon, Cooper, Cooper. So that means that um, so this is going to be symmetric because we have 100 and 100. So you could sort of, sort of skip this step by multiplying by two, but this is an introductory problem. So I'm just going to do it step by step. So if you're only considering Sheldonium, Sheldons with Sheldons, you are ignoring the bottom line because even though there's an interaction here, you're only considering Sheldons with Sheldons and Coopertoniums with Coopertoniums. So for Sheldoniums, for Sheldoniums, each atom has how many nearest neighbors? Well, if you're this Sheldonium, then you have two, two, and so on. So each Sheldonium has two nearest neighbors that are equal, so two Sheldoniums. 
and um, the bond energy e bond like this for sheldonium sheldonium is equal to the number of sheldoniums so that would be 100 times the number of nearest neighbors which is equal to 2 and then we have to do one half this is double counting Um, this amounts for double counting right here and then just the amount of energy of each um, sheldonium sheldonium so this will be the green graph so negative one one times ten uh, to the what is it Oh, 10 to the negative 21, yes, uh, negative 21. So this is equal to negative 100 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. But this is only for the sheldoniums. However, what happens is that if you go ahead and move the ruler in order to do the copertoniums, you end up with exactly the same number because this is 100 copertoniums. You also have two nearest neighbors. You also have to account for double counting and the potential well is exactly the same. So we're looking again at this value over here. Like this. So final answer for two. Is the E total. Uh, well, the E bond. I'm sorry, for the PE, PE, and is equal to the addition of these two. So negative 200 times 10 to the negative 21 joules, final answer. Okay, but that is only for... Um, Sheldon Sheldon's and Cupertoniums, Cupertoniums. Part three says, okay, now uh, focus on the Sheldonium Cupertonium bonds. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, for part two, it was very easy to just ignore this structure and just do the Sheldoniums first and then the Cupertoniums. For this part, we are actually gonna have to do them together. So if you are a sheldonium, so I'll just say you are this sheldonium, how many nearest neighbors cupertoniums do you have? So just one, right? And if you are a cupertonium, how many nearest neighbors uh, sheldoniums do you have? Just one. So for part three, we have 200 atoms. one nearest neighbor for every atom in terms of the um, in terms of the restriction that it has to be different because it's part three now obviously if you are this cupertonium you have three nearest neighbors two that are like you one that's different but the ones that are like you we already consider so when i'm saying one nearest neighbor I mean that I'm on doing part three and I'm only considering the one that's different from me as a Cupertonium because the others I already consider. So let's just be mindful about that. This is part three. Um, yeah, so E bond is equal to number of neighbors, the uh, number of atoms, number of nearest neighbors, and then we don't want to double count 
because uh, this sheldonium has this cupertonium, but then this cupertonium has this sheldonium. So if you multiply times 200, you have to divide by two because otherwise you're literally double counting the bonds. So the total amount of bonds in this case, if you do one, two, three, four, five, ta, 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 it's going to be 100, not 200. So that's why we always divide by two um, in these cases, because we don't want to double count. And then we have to multiply times the uh, well potential value. In this case, we are doing sheldonium cupertoniums. So whereas before I was looking at this point in the graph, now I have to look at this point in the graph, which is negative three times 10 um, to negative 21. I already did the negative point, uh, the negative over here. So now um, we multiply. So this is 100. So this is uh, 300. This is 300. Negative 300 times. 10 to the 21, oh, 21, use final answer. And then part four is saying, use results to calculate how much energy is required to break all bonds. Um, so part four is actually very easy because it shows the addition. So the energy bond total would be the energy bond of the likewise, the sheldoniums, sheldoniums, um, what's the other one, PE, plus the E bond of the different ones, sheldonium, protoniums. So this is negative 200 times 10 to negative 21 plus, uh, oh no, negative 300 times 10 to the 21. These are just my answers for part B and part C. Um, so E bond total is equal to negative 500 times 10 to negative 21 joules. Final answer. So as you can see, this was a pretty straightforward problem. The only thing that I would consider difficult personally is that me personally, um, I tend to forget the double counting part. So this part, it always, you know, if I'm going to miss something, it's going to be that I forget the double counting. However, it is very important and it is pretty straightforward to see by this simple structure then if I don't divide by two, then basically what I'm saying is that I have 200 bonds. When in reality, if you if you do the drawings, you're gonna see that you end up with only 100. Um, so it's not something that I don't understand. It's just something that I always forget, just as one would forget a negative sign. I tend to forget that. So, you know, if anything, learn from my mistakes um, and just forget your double counting where when you're going from counting nearest neighbors to actually calculating an energy. Other than that, I consider this a pretty easy problem. Um, I don't think anything was particularly difficult about it. So make sure that, uh, you know, it's easy for you to going into your midterm or final exam. If you guys have any questions, please make sure to leave a like. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm sorry, please make sure to leave a comment and I'll make sure to read them and do my best to get back to you. If you found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, that really helps our channel, and I will see you guys on the next video.